So welcome back. We're now going to have a look at a new programming language and the programming language is called Haskell. In fact, you've already been introduced to Haskell if you do CS106 because the syrup system is based on Haskell. You'll notice that the symbol of Haskell is a lambda and that's because Haskell is based on the lambda calculus. So we're going to write functions and then those functions are going to compute values for us. I'm using a, a web page here called tryhaskell.org. Now you can either watch this video and as I work through it, or if you prefer, you can work through the tutorial yourself and you don't need to watch the video. So let's type help because that tells us what to do to start with. It says, okay, let's try this out. So what I've got here is a prompt. The prompt is just a Lambda and the Lambda allows me to type expressions. So I'll type in what it says, five plus seven. Okay, 12. And it gives me some type information here. When you see two colons followed by some stuff, that's some type information. Don't worry about that for the minute. Okay, so now I've got to type in my name. All right, I'll type in my name like this, John. Okay, and what you see is that the type of this object is a list of characters. So strings in Haskell are lists of characters. Let's type in a list of numbers, uh, 42, 13, and 22. And I can have those as well. I can also, I can apply a function to that list so I can sort it into order. So let's sort 42, 13, 22. And there it is, that's the same um, um, list that's sorted into order. We can also sort out, we can apply the function sort to strings. So I can type in my name and get it sorted into order. And it goes, Hujno. And it says, watch out for Virgino, you should keep their credentials for the police. Right, okay. I can also create what's called tuples. So um, my nemesis is 28 years of age. Well, I'm 50 <clears throat> and uh, I can create a tuple of my nemesis, Virgino, and also Virgino's name like this. I just put round brackets around it and that will create the tuple for me. I can use FIST, F-S-T, to dig values out of um, tuples. So if I go F-S-T of 57, Hudge, no, then that will return just the number 57. Okay, so I got my age back from the tuple. Now let's say I want to use a value more than once. Well, what I can do is I can use a let syntax. I can go let x equal four in x times times x like that. So that returns 16 because I wanted to use uh, the value four twice. And I can also let, in fact, I'll, I think if I just click on that, that will put that in there. So let villain equal 28 crews in first of villain. So the idea is here that will return me just the first of that tuple. Okay, so let's try this. It says, let's take a short detour to learn about syntactic sugar. Try typing this out. Well, let's type that out. So it's the character A joined onto the empty list. This here, this lip, this colon, this means cons. You've already seen cons. I did it for you in Python. And in Haskell, the colon means join this onto this list. So this joins the, the character A onto the empty list. So we get the character A joined onto the empty list. And I've told you already that um, lists of characters are essentially strings in, in Haskell. So for example, um, if I write this, so it's saying, take the letter B 
and const that onto the empty list. And then take the letter A and const that onto the result of that. Let's see if that's equal to the list A and B, like that. And the answer is it's true. And also, if I go um, A, B, C, like this, that's actually equal to the string ABC. So in other words, this is ABC is a way of writing the string, which is the list of characters A, B and C. Now, you'll remember that I um, showed you in the lecture on the Lambda calculus that you could apply functions to other functions. So in other words, you could pass in functions to functions. And one of these is the map function. It takes in a list and also a function. Now there's two things here. This plus one here, we're interpreting that as a function, a function that adds one to its argument. This one dot dot five, this is a bit of Haskell cleverness. It means the list one, two, three, four, five. When you use the dot dot, Haskell will work it out for you. So in other words, it returns you a list two, three, four, five, six. So we could have just typed map plus one on to one, two, three, four, five, like that. And that would have given us the same result, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So in other words, I passed in a function to another function. That's where it gets quite good. So let's have a look. So here is, we're going to map the function times 99 onto the list 1 to 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 are all going to get multiplied by 99. So there you go. That's the resulting list. We're going to map divide by 5 onto that list. And we get fractions, or I get real numbers, in fact. And we're finally, we're going to filter greater than five. Now, filter is a function, just like map, but here it will remove only those fun only those numbers which are five or five or less. So, in other words, it removed the numbers three and one. So, filter is very useful. Notice that a tuple is different to a list because you can do this. You can combine um, different, in a list, they all have to be the same type in Haskell, not in Python, but in Haskell, that's true. Whereas in um, uh, Haskell, you can join together items of different types. Okay, so we know already, if I've got a list two, three, I can join a new element on the tweet using the cons operator, just like that. So now that's the list one, two, three. But you can't do that with tuples. Tuples are not, you can't change them. So lists you can do, um, and but you can't, you can't change them. Right, let's have a, let's write our own functions. Let's square of x equal x times x. So this is our first function that we've written ourselves. It's called square. So think of it as lambda x dot x times x, except that we've given it a name. And then we can apply it to um, a, an actual argument, the argument 10. So we're saying, let this be this in this. And that gives us 100. So here's another one. Let add one of x be x plus one in add one of five. What do you think that returns? It returns six. Let second of x equal sund of x in second of three, four. So sund of x is a function that returns the second argument of a tuple. And because we can't remember that, we've defined a function called second. So it returns four. Now, let's have a look at this and see if we can work out what this will return. Let square of x be x times x in, and then here's the expression to evaluate, map square onto one to 10. What do you think that's gonna return? Have a, if you've followed everything that 
that's gone on so far, you should be able to work out what that returns. Have a little think and see if you can do it. It returns a list of all the squares of the natural numbers from 1 to 10. Excellent. Okay. So you can define your own functions using this syntax, and now you can map them onto lists. How can we upcase a letter? Okay, so actually, if we, let's do this. Let's do these. So let add one of x be x plus one in map add one to one five seven. You'll get two six eight. You add one to each of those. Let take fives be filter. It, it's equal to five in take fives of one five two five. Three, five. Now remember here we're applying filter and not map. Filter keeps the elements of a list if it passes the test and doesn't if it doesn't. So what might that return? It returns just the fives. It just keeps all the fives for you. So everything else doesn't get returned. And because there's three fives in here, it returns all of them. Now let's do this one. Let takes fives equal to uh, filter is equal to five in map take fives onto one five five one one. What do you think that will return? It just keeps all the fives inside the lists. So it keeps the list structure, but it returns just the list structure with five. And because there's no fives in here, then, so in other words, what we're doing is here we're, is we're using a filter as our function and then we're mapping it onto all of these. So filter equals five is our function and then we're mapping it onto each of these lists. So that's quite clever. We're using two higher order functions as they're called, ones that take functions in as part of their argument. Filter and then map. Okay. Okay, next, let's see if what happens if we go to upper of A returns a big one, a, a big A. Okay, so it says if characters are things like A, uh, and I want to. So what do we, what do we write if we want to capitalize the whole name? What would we do? Well, I'm going to show you the spoiler. We map, use the map function to upper on the whole thing. So if I want to capitalize Chris, I use map to upper on Chris because this is a list and to upper is a function. And there it goes. Okay. Let's pause there and I'll start the next bit in the next video.